This is Twit. There is um, there. There's a thing. There's a new thing, and it's an alternative to Envy Link. Which Envy Link is that the is that the technology to be able to put two graphics cards on one board? Or am I thinking of or, the wrong thing? It it is, but also in servers. I mean, server clusters, server. So it's more than just a single single server. It's connecting a lot of GPUs or accelerators and. You know, we call, I, I'll kind of probably switch back and forth nomenclature, but in in this discussion, pretty much they're pretty much the same thing. They're they're being used for AI type uh, computations. Mm. So, and you know, Nvidia right now is printing money with their hardware for the AI market, and no one's dethroning them right now. But that could change. So, NVLink is getting a competitor. Well, you know, several. Intel, AMD, Cisco, Google, HPE, Meta, Broadcom, and others have formed an alliance and come out with the UA link as a new open standard that they want to use to dethrone NV link. So, you know, as some of you might think, it must be bad for like AMD and Intel to work together. But, you know, this isn't the first time they've teamed up. Yeah. Just last year, they came up with the Ultra Ethernet for high speed networking. And, you know, then they also had help from Meta and HPE and others, but they're not strangers to joining forces. So UA Link is kind of like the ultra Ethernet that's standard, but it's specialized for linking together GPUs or accelerators. So it, there's some overhead and assumptions they can make because of the specialized uh, arena that it's, it's working in. And now these can all be on the same system or in a group of systems, allowing them all your GPUs and accelerators to communicate and share data at a much higher speed than current networking standards. Ultra Ethernet will still have a place as UA Link is specialized. So while Ultra Ethernet and UA Link might overlap some, they're not inter they're not totally interchangeable. So one is not going to dethrone the other. The these aren't competing standards; they're uh, symbiotic standards. With large AI loads, there's a need for more processing power that can be shoved even into a single rack of servers. So this will allow up to 1,024 GPUs to be networked at an extremely high rate. And there's probably going to be more that can even be added in later revisions of the standard. And they're hoping to have the first revision or the first specification 1.0 out in the third quarter of 2024. And in the fourth quarter, they want to have the first update, which will provide even more bandwidth. The rollout and the roadmap for this specification is very aggressive to really hit, you know, they want to, they want to give NVIDIA a roundhouse. You know, they want, they want to nail it, clock them right on the chin. And UA Link will even be leveraging the Infinity Fabric protocol, which if you're an AMD fan, that's the high-speed CPU connection that AMD has. The downside is the estimated implementation in hardware will be around 2026 as the standard's going to be out soon, but the silicon pipeline is going to take a while to have the designs become reality because until the standard is pretty solidified, you can't be making all your traces in the silicon or else you might have uh, some issues. And, and there's actually a real world example of that with HBM3 where Samsung designed their part before the standard solidified well, now their current part doesn't meet the standard and they've had to go back and make some tweaks to, to meet the standard because they, they thought the standard was going to go one way and it didn't. And it, you know, so, so this stuff can bite you. So you, you have to be pretty confident before you start laying out the silicon design. Uh, we are going to be seeing some new AI hardware in both which, from both Intel and AMD, which they're feverishly working on, if the rumors can be believed, which I'm sure they are, because they're looking and saying, I want a piece of that AI market. So they are throwing a lot of resources into um, getting into this uh, computation, the GPU accelerator for AI market. Now, I do want to point out, this isn't specific to Linux, but most places this will be used will be Linux, and it's an open standard, so... You know, we we might be bending the Linux part of the show title a little, but you know, <laughs> who doesn't love a nice open standard? You know, especially when companies are really starting to fight. That just means we win. Now, take a look at the article in show notes for more details and keep an eye out for more hardware coming out. 
which while aimed at AI and other computational tax, ta tasks, sorry there, it's very close to GPUs for gaming. So expect some higher power GPUs in the next couple of years because if they can make quite a bit of money making a few small tweaks to their AI hardware, yeah, the companies will. You know, if, if we can say, if they can say, oh, we'll tweak this a little bit and we serve a different market and we, that there is money to be had there, you know, the, the return on investment is good. They want the money. So we, we should benefit even as uh, standard users and game players and people using Blender and things like that. We, we should have an advantage coming. Mm. Um, if you're wondering why an open standard, it's because right now, like I said, NVIDIA is a juggernaut of the AI space, and they know if they try to come up with their own proprietary standard, and, you know, Intel has a standard, and AMD has a standard, and, you know, Broadcom has a standard, it's just going to be that much harder to get adoption. But if all the hardware will work with the standard, and depending on how successful their hardware is, NVIDIA might need to support it as well. Which, now... Okay, I'm going to kind of go off the article a little bit. So I'm saying when the door, which opens the door for mixed vendor accelerator pools. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael Larable says he doesn't think it's going to happen, but I think it can. Now, it's going to take more than UA Link to make them work together. That would just let them talk, but they would need to all speak the same language. But then if you look at what's happening with like rock m and other open standards like that i think that in the future it could happen that we could have mixed vendor accelerator pools and i think the industry would really want to go to that because they you know they one vendor buy-in is not uh usually in your best interest you want you want to have options and I, I think it, I think it's going to happen eventually. It, UA Link won't do it alone, but it it kind of gets us one step closer. Yeah. So, just to 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 make sure we we understand what we're talking about, does this replace PCI Express? Are we talking about a new connector on the motherboard for plugging video cards into? It or doesn't is this really be an additional connector. It, it's kind of like an additional connector the way I understand it because mm -hmm. it's it's super high speed and it's only for accelerator pooling. So this is not a, uh, you know, like I said, it's not like Ethernet. It's not like PCIe where it's kind of a universal standard. It's very specific. So kind of like the, GPU it, to GPU? Yeah, so yes. the, the, I did a little looking. The way I understand it, so I've got a card here. They ignore the weird stuff on the bottom. Um, the way it would work is you would still you'd plug your card into PCI Express and then and, and sometimes it's not how it physically looks, but there's then basically on the top, there's another connector. And so you connect onto the top of the card. And then so in the in the NVIDIA case with Envy Connect, they make these little bridges. You can put two cards right beside each other and you can bridge the two of them to take it together. It's a lot like the old SLI technology. It's essentially the same idea. It's just in this case, it's to allow your, you know, your your models, your kernels that you're running on your cards to be able to talk to each other without having to go back through the CPU to do it. And they talk about you would have like um switches and things like that they would also mm -hmm. interface so you can get these monster numbers of accelerators all all communicating yeah and so i imagine on a lot of installs instead of it actually be, so some of nvidia's it is literally a connector on the top um but from what i was reading you also have some of these with nv link where it's like an extended pci express slot where it's it's just extra pins on the end that is an NV link connector. And so I imagine that that is what it's going to eventually be, which we've seen this before in the computer industry, right? Back in the, oh, I can't, I don't remember what the name of it was, but the, uh, uh, you know, you had your graphics, like your, your, your card, and then you're extended. And some of those got really long in the old days in, in, uh, inside of computer chassis. Um, but the so, the you know, AGP slot. Yes, yes, yes. The old AGPs. Um, so I think that is probably where this is going to go, to where it's going to be essentially like an extension on the PCI Express. And uh, will we will we see these? Will we see some of these make it down to uh, consumer computers? Uh, maybe I don't know. 
I, Will we see support in the Linux kernel? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Definitely by seven. Because, <laughs> yeah, because because basically, it's it, most of the data centers running the AI. They're running Linux. Oh yeah. I mean, it, almost all. You of know, them. It, yeah, and, and because really Linux won, except for the desktop. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everywhere else, Linux is the dominant operating system. Yep. Phones, yep, servers, phones, AI yeah. systems, mm -hmm. industrial equipment. It. Yep. Yeah. Even your cars. Yeah. And uh -huh. all the embedded hardware you've got in your home. Yep. Probably your toaster. <laughs> and I, I could see that they maybe have it for consumers. It, it would kind of be more like the NV Link, where you just have the little connector between the two. Mm -hmm. You you know. But I, I could see it, you know, someday. Because if it's the standard hardware, yeah, okay, it's just that much less we have to do to change, you know, when we turn this into a gaming GPU. You know. Yeah, I was thinking about that. So, like, what, what do we think the, uh, the scenario is going to be where you need to have two of these connected on a consumer's motherboard? Like, is there, is there at some point, are we going to have you know, a GPU in one slot and an AI accelerator in the slot beside it. And then they talk to each other over some kind of link like that. Um, or are we eventually going to be in the point where you have, a, again, a dedicated network card and you want them to be able to talk to each other? I don't know, like there's possibilities there. I, I just, I don't know that any of those are really gonna catch on except maybe, maybe the AI accelerator. I could, I could foresee, I could understand that being a thing eventually. Well, Especially I can see it in like render phones doing... or things like that. Well, true, but then we're kind of moving away from the, the idea of consumer hardware. Yeah, uh, obviously, true. obviously it makes sense for a render farm. I'm trying to think of like why a, a gamer is going to need um, NVLink or UA Link. And the only thing that comes to mind is, oh, if you want, if you want really, really realistic AI behavior, then buy our AI accelerator card. And here's the clip to be able to clip it onto your GPU so that your GPU and your AI card could talk directly. <laughs> well, and you could have that, uh, you got that 8K monitor at, you know, 120 hertz or whatever. So you got to have your GPU. And then to make your opponents really really hard or lifelike you have ai mm -hmm. that you're playing against so it's very well uh, it's not just it's not just um the ai for like so you're, you're thinking kind of fps make your opponents smarter i don't even think that's the really interesting thing to do with ai and gaming um i think probably the most interesting thing to do with ai in gaming is in more story driven games being able to do um uh, smarter dialogue that actually responds to what the player has to say. Uh, somebody oh, did this. In a, somebody's already done this in a mod for you know S Skyrim mod or whatever. They they connected the NPCs up to uh, an LLM, um, and of course the, the Skyrim hated it. Like the 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 creator of Bethesda, it's like, oh no, we can't believe it. But it was really interesting because you could then like actually type in things to say and the NPCs would give you reasonable responses based on what you said. And it's like, that is one of the coolest ideas I've ever seen in gaming to get, to get actual like realistic responses to people's actions and words. And I, I think that is an idea that could have legs. And I would take it one step further. It would, it would change the world you're in. Yes. So, a lot of the open world, like if you're playing Witcher 3 or something, there's, oh, I make a decision here and it changes, but you're still kind of on certain tracks. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if you had the AI that would, you could kind of have either thousands of tracks or you, you have almost unlimited because everything I do, my game is unique based on everything I've done in the game. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be really interesting. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>